we'll write the code today in Python 2, there's not many changes. Uh, I think the only thing will be input versus raw input. We're good so far. Are we recording yet? Well, that's perfect. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what this is, is it's aimed at people that are almost new to Python or almost new to programming. Uh, and so if you can write a Hello World program and that's about it, you're in the right class. If you're going to start talking to me about dictionary comprehensions and classes and iterables, this is probably not where you want to be. Uh, and I'm going to expect all of you to ask questions. So, beginner level class, we're going to work in Python 2. Python 3 is out. Python 3 has got some very cool stuff in it. Uh, the reason we don't use it, I'm one of dozens of IT managers at Centene Corporation, where our current web project is something called a healthcare exchange on a national level. So if you want a complex problem to work on, it's the one you want to work on. Uh, but we're still using Python 2 for our stuff because a lot of the libraries aren't ported to 3 yet. But if you can, 3 is pretty cool. Most of you Mac and Linux users have probably got 2 installed. Uh, and two, 2 is still, it's still a rock and roll language. What I do expect is that you are able to write hello world and run it in a file. So if you've done that, that's all you really need to do. So what I would suggest is maybe create a directory if you don't have one for, for Pi Ohio 2013 where you can save a file and run it, because we're going, to be, we're going to be going through and creating a game, and maybe two if we have time. You need to ask questions. If you don't know something, odds are somebody else doesn't either. And there's lots of stuff, and there's what ifs, and how do I do this? If it's above what I want to cover in this class, I'll just say that's beyond what we can do right now. But it's, it's very likely, oh, how do I do this? Uh, I'll be happy to show you. And if we're not having fun, we're doing something wrong. Because this should be a fun class. I've taught it in Texas. I, I help organize Pi Arkansas. Uh, I work in Little Rock. I've done it here a couple times, and, and usually it's a pretty fun class. So I'm, I'm hoping we wake up a little. Right now I just see a bunch of what we used to call coma mode when I taught math. Uh, and before we get going, I want every one of you to find a conference organizer and thank them for putting this conference on. Uh, if you haven't put something like this on, you have absolutely no clue how much work it is. Uh, and the happiest day for the conference organizers are when it all comes down because there are no lists to work. Uh, I guess they still worry about speakers showing up. So uh, Eric and uh, who are the other volunteers? They're in your program. Catherine Devlin's one. Find them and thank them. And I'm super, super serious about that. This is all free to you. Uh, so, that they deserve a hand. I don't know what's up. Do you see this? I do. <coughs> it's like off the screen. No, no, that's... that's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an application programmer. Um, can you pull up your display? settings for the, the desktop, I mean. Well, I'm trying to... Okay, what are... Uh, screen, the screen resolution. Oh, there we go. <coughs> okay, where are we coding-wise? How many of you are coders? You program... Okay. What languages have we come from? Not a trick question. All of them? Uh, All of them? Sorry. Wow, and being that young. I mean, uh, C, Ruby, Perl, um, Assembler. I'm actually a Python coder, but okay. I play games, so that's why I'm here. Um, okay, this, this, okay, this may be a little less than you're expecting. I, I've never, I, I, so my previous job was building games in Flash, so yeah. I didn't know how to do it in Python. Yeah, yeah. you probably, there, there's, there's a package called Pygame. That, that's probably what you're looking for. This is going to be what's an if statement, what's a while loop, how do you get user input, how do you do comparisons. Uh, so, so that's cool. Sir? Uh, 
What? I do English. English. You program in English? What other, what other languages are popular right now? I'm old school. I'm Fortran, Assembler, uh, some things you probably never heard of. Just simple bash scripting and... Scripting, sure. Bash, bash scripting. Perl. And I mean, Perl's a great language. I came from the Perl community about 12 years ago. Uh, I think Python's better. If I find something better than Python, I'll go to that. You got it? I think so, yeah. That's good we got for now. I love having tech crews that know what they're doing. Thank you. How much experience people have programmed in Python? Obviously, Pygame. We will not get into classes here. No. No. Okay. It'll, it'll be a simple serial script, maybe about 30 lines long when we're done. Oh, okay. But okay. how to get input, how to do comparisons, if, whiles, we're going to throw exceptions, we're going to catch exceptions, we're going to, we're going to do some, some basic stuff. Okay, we're done with this. So if you would, open up idle. And again, I'm going to Python, I'm going to use 2.7. What's that? We got the PA system working. Oh, is the PA? Can you all hear me at least here? I, I, I'm told I project pretty well. Can you uh, like, dim the lights or something so the yeah. screen is easier? I can make it warmer. <laughs> yeah, that, that's about the same. Okay, extra, extra bonus points. Anybody know what IDLE stands for? Idle. We just, we just opened a package called Idle. I'm just kidding. It's integrated development language environment. It's just a fancy way to say editor, and you can run something. If, if you're going to code in, in Python or any language, and this, I don't want to start a flame war right at the beginning of class, but there are some really good Python-specific editors. I know a lot of people say it's Vim or uh, Emacs or the one with the really big learning curve that people like. I, I don't even remember it anymore. Uh, but there, uh, there's one called, if you're on Windows, Python Win is a free editor that's geared towards Windows and it'll make your life easy. If you code professionally, it's worth spending money and getting a, a good professional development environment. I use Wingware. Uh, it has a lot of features that makes my life really easy. We're just going to use Idle today because you all have it on your, your uh, boxes. You Mac, can you Mac users have Idle? Yes. And how do I get it? How do, how do you bring up Idle in Mac? Well, you have to download it. You have to. How do I download it? It comes with Python. You can put the Mac. This is where, I, now what you can do, if you open a console window and type in Python, you'll get the interpreter. And that, that's really what we're after. And that the Linux people, if you just bring up a uh, command window, I'll do it on Windows. And just type on Python, you'll get something like that. And what I'm after is something with the three chevrons. This, I feel I'm fighting my microphone. So has everybody got the three chevrons? Yeah, just pull up a terminal window and type in Python, and you'll get something like this. It'll tell you what version you're using. We're using 2.73. And the three chevrons, and this, this is one of the cool features about newer languages. Python's not the only one that has this, but to have an uh, interactive terminal, you can use this just uh, type commands and see what happens. Uh, print hello. So you can print in, or you can type in valid Python commands, and it'll, it'll do it for you. And when you're in the interpreter, you don't even have to say print. You can just do hello, and it's going to assume you mean print. So as you learn Python, this is a great place to play. If you're in idle, do it up in the main screen. You can do it in the editor. Uh, you can import libraries. If you do an import this, this is something every Python programmer should see. This was written by uh, Tim Peters, and it was written tongue-in-cheek. 
Okay, some people take this way, way too seriously. But they're, they're kind of like the, the guiding principles that Python goes on. And, and the number one thing is things should be simple. Uh, there's a comment here about things being clear, but it may not be clear unless you're Dutch. That's because Guido von Rossum is Dutch. Uh, that's where the, he's the, the, the creator of Python. So you can bring in libraries. You can do all sorts of very cool stuff in the emulator here. And we're going to do that today. I'm going to go back to idle. And what I want to do is I want to get a new, new uh, window. So I just clicked new. Those of you using the, uh, uh, on the Mac and Linux, just create a new text file. And we're going to save it with a .py on the end. This is where I hope to have people come in here in a second and, and help with individual problems. Okay, and that, that's the program I want you to be able to run. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I've got a directory called projects, PyOhio213, and I'm going to save it as hello.py. Hello. And then in the emulator, in idle, you can go to this run command and you can run your program. And over here, there's the output of the program. And for our Mac and Linux friends, I want you to put one more line. You can do this in Windows if you want to as well. Do a pound exclamation slash user bin python. The pound sign in Python is a comment, so the rest of this line is a comment. The, the interpreter is almost going to ignore it. With the exclamation point, okay, the pound sign exclamation point, that's called a shebang. And what the shebang does is when you people running Linux go to execute this as a script, the interpreter is going to look at this line and say, use user bin Python to interpret this script. You shell coders use probably user, user bash or whatever, C shell. So is everybody getting this? Can, can we run a Hello World program and then we can get to work on, on writing our first game? And before you know it, you'll be heading out to EA Sports asking for millions of dollars. Anybody not getting this? We'll go ahead and wait and we'll... Because if, if we don't get this, the rest of the class is just no fun. Is anybody getting it? Is this mic on? Okay, come on, guys. I know it's Sunday, but it's noon. We're here to learn in your Pythonistas. Okay, well, let's get to work then. I'm going to bring up another, uh, sure, save it. Another new window. And I'm going to save it. I think the audio just came on, did it? Projects, PyOhio 2013. And I'm going to call this Hilo. What I want to do is, is write a game with you that's just a number guessing game. The, the computer will pick a number, and we have to guess it, and it'll tell, no, you're too high, you're too low. And along the way, we'll learn a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to start out with the shebang again. And I'm going to diverge a little bit for a second because there's a, a standard library routine that I want all of you to learn uh, as you go forward, and it's the logging routine. So I'm going to import logging, and this tells Python to go out to the standard library, which is huge in Python, and bring in the module that's going to allow us to do some logging. 
And this is a huge library with some great features to it. If you have the time, Google an article uh, by Jeremy Jacobs. Uh, so it's a really good article on introduction to the logging, but we, we use this a lot. You can, uh, you can just do some amazing things we don't have time to get into. Logging.basic, oops, config. I don't type much standing up, so this is a little weird for me. So I'm going to preface this command with logging, and that's saying use this logging module I just brought in. It's got a method called basic config, and I'm just going to say level equals logging.debug, with debug being all in caps. Okay, then I'll say logging.debug. This is a debug message. So logging has something called debug, and then you put a message in it. Logging.info. This is an info message. And I'll do one more. Logging.error. This is an error message. And then if you want, save that and go ahead and run it and see what happens. Hopefully it'll work. Which pop-up would we run this? Pardon? What should it look like when we run it? Well, that's what I want to find out. What would you expect it? I mean, just, just not knowing anything about it. One thing about Python is it tries to be obvious. What would you expect the output of this program to look like? Pardon? It would print those messages. I would hope so, sure. Let's go ahead and run it. And I'll leave it up there so you can... Okay. So it's pretty close to what we expected. It's going to print out the level. This right here is the level of the message. The root says this is the top level routine in our program. You can have subroutines. It'll tell you where it comes from. And there's our message. This is a debug message. This is an info message. This is an error message. And as great as the debugger is in Python, as great as the debugger is in Wingware and Komono and all the editors, I've been coding for about 30 years, and the best debug technique for me so far is a well-placed print statement to have your program tell you what it's doing. What I like about this, and this is one of the strengths of it, is you change the level from debug to info. And run it. The debug message isn't there any longer. It won't print it out. It'll only print out what you specify in what's considered more severe. So this will print out info messages, error, warning, critical, and fatal. So what we can do in our program is we can put debug statements all over it when we're developing it and have the, the program chat to us, and we're going to do that. But when you go to sell it, you turn debug off. So you know, the, the, the player doesn't know what the solution is. Is everyone getting this? One of the best things you can do if you're going to code in Python is learn to use this module. Learn, learn the logging module. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm just going to say start game. And I'm going to have another debug at the end of it. <coughs> OK, 
game complete. And I'll do that when I'm developing stuff because I'll go to run it and I'll just get a prompt or something and it's sitting there and I think the program's running going through something and it's stuck in an infinite loop or you know some something's happened so it's nice at the end to have, yeah, okay I'm done. Sure, this, oh yeah this needs to go back to debug, thank you. And I'm going to get even a little fancier than that. I'm going to say format equals and that's totally optional. So format equals tick percent message in parentheses s. That's just saying only give me the message. Don't give me any other information. You can set the format up to give you a timestamp, and if you're doing it to a log file, that's handy to have a timestamp when the message was written. You can tell it what format you want the timestamp in. You can tell it what thread it came from, what process it came from. I just want the message. So if you do that and run it, we should just get game started, game complete. So all, all this stuff is gone. And once we get that, we can start writing our game. We there? Anybody not there? Okay. We're all here, yeah, we're all here. Okay, so we're going to write a high-low guessing game. What, what do we need? I mean, what, what's one of the first things we need for a high-low guessing game? You need, you need a number to guess. That would be a good start. So let's go ahead. And for now, just hard code a solution. We use lowercase letters for variables and all sorts of stuff. And if you want, there's actually a pretty well-defined style guide. If you uh, Google Python PEP8, P-E-P-8 for Python enhancement proposal. It is, it's what the community uses. The community uses for their, their style guides. Uh, four spaces, indent, don't use tab. One to use capitals, one to use mixed. Generally, if you use all capital letters, that means it's a constant. It's not going to change in your program, or it shouldn't change. And that's, that's, that's true in most languages I've, I've programmed in, except for Fortran and COBOL, where everything's capital. Okay, we've got, we've got our solution. What, what's another thing we need for our game? Pardon? Yeah, so I've got to have a guess. Got to let the user guess a number. I'm going to call mine current guess. You could call yours guess. If you're programming, back in the olden days, there were languages where you actually you're limited to the number of characters you could use for a, a variable name. Assembler, you can use eight. And so we had to come up with very clever names for them. Use something that's meaning, don't, don't say n equals, because you get down in your program, you don't know what n is. So I'm going to call it current guess. And this is one of our differences between Python 2 and 3. With Python 2, I'm going to use a function called raw input. In Python 3, it's just input. And then prompt your user, please enter a guess, colon, space. That will prompt to standard input, which is our prompt will go to standard output, which is a screen, and expect something from standard input, which is the keyboard. And I think I'm going to do that up here too. After we do solution, I'm going to put in a, a debug statement. Oops. Can we make a tight size like 
makes bigger. Oh, I didn't think of that. That would be my screen resolution, wouldn't it, on the Windows area? Uh, I think to go to uh, preferences, idle preferences. Or no, you're not running that. I'm sorry. How's that? Thank you. I learned something today. Thank you. Okay, so this syntax, current guess is and percent string means I'm expecting a string, which is a series of characters, comma, and that's what I want you to put in that string. So it should tell you the solution is this. It should ask you for a guess, type in your guess, hit return, it should tell you what your guess is. That's where we should be. Please enter a guess, one. Okay, so it's doing exactly what I think it should do. How are we doing? Are we there? We're, we're almost ready to update our resumes. I think I know how you can do it. What you do is you make it so that you have it, so that it takes the solution and it subtracts your guess from it. And if the solution is, or if the remaining number is positive, it says your number, your guess is too low. But if the remaining number is negative, your guess is too high. Okay. That's the answer to my next question. So you, you're right. He, he's already, what, what's the next step? You want to tell the user. Now, let's, let's first take, what, what, what if they get it right? Let's assume they get the right answer. Congratulations, you won. You're a winner or whatever. And if you don't, you're a non-winner because I'm not supposed to say you're a loser any longer. Uh, so, so, if... Okay, here, here's a, a decision we're going to ask.
could subtract the low limit. You could subtract the low limit from the high limit and then multiply that number by like 0.07, so that way you get 7% of the range. Zero, and so it's what we're saying, take, take a percentage. But I'm saying instead of just hard coding this, maybe make that based off of. Ask, you know, what, what is the low number you want, what's the high number you want? But there is your game, you are free to go and, and patent it. How much time do we have? Do we have time to do a couple more things? Not really. Not really? Sure, let's do a deck of cards real quick. And this, this is really simple, and this gets into the overkill if you want to make classes and make each card an object. And the, I'm just going to show you how to do it. Very simple. Do I have until 2 o'clock, or am I supposed to be out of here? Well, they start at 2 o'clock. They start. Okay, I'm going to show you... It's not No, we've, we've got four minutes. No, we don't. I'm sorry, we don't. Look... Look, look in Pi Game. Okay. Pi Game is really good if you're going to make games. To make a deck of cards, you'd want to use something called a list comprehension. Okay, you should have got my email at some point, gslinstrom at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you if you want to work on this, although I'm in Arkansas. Ohio has one of the best Python user communities in the country. You've got some real honchos that would love to teach you more. Get involved with the Pi Ohio list, the, the Central Arkansas user group. <laughs> Games, database, web, whatever it is, they're more than happy to teach you. Uh, but if, if you do something, if you make a million dollars, you owe me 20 bucks for a t-shirt. All right, thanks for your time.